Hello, this is Jeff Will here, and I'm working a problem on fabrication in the Computer Architecture course ECE 424. We want to look at our problem here, and I'll read it to you in case you can't see it on the screen. It says, we wish to produce a chip or a die that has a die size of 15 millimeters by 20 millimeters. The dies will be fabricated on 30 centimeter diameter silicon wafers. We purchase, purchase ingots for $20,000, each of which can be sliced into 100 wafers. We use a process which results in an average of 0.12 defects per centimeter squared. So when we read the problem, initially we want to take note of the fact that the die size is given in millimeters but the defects are given in terms of centimeters. So we'll have to, uh, centimeters squared, so we'll have to be careful about that. When we have the fabrication yield, let's write down our primary equation for the yield. The yield is going to be 1 over the quantity 1 plus, now these are tricky units here, area of the die times the defects per area, this quantity divided by 2, and then take note the whole quantity squared. Okay, so the area of the die we're going to have to calculate, and the defects per area is given to us. So, the area of the die is going to be 15 millimeters times 20 millimeters, and that results in 300 millimeters squared. Now, I'm going to convert this because our other quantity is in terms of centimeters squared. Remember that since millimeters is squared, there's going to be 100 millimeters squared in every centimeter squared. So this gets converted to 3 centimeters squared. So you can kind of think about that. Maybe it would be a size about like this, maybe like the face of a, um, face of a big uh, dice or something like that. And so 3 centimeters squared, and that makes uh, that sense. So we've got 1.5 centimeters times 2 centimeters. That's going to give us an area of 3 centimeters. So let's plug this in. With the yield, then, we're going to have 1 over the quantity 1 plus. We're going to plug these two things in. We've got 3. Now I'm going to leave the units out of there because I was really careful. Just because on this video, it's going to be hard to see. So I've got 3 times 0.12. And that is going to be over 2. Now always remember, this whole quantity is going to be squared. So that, then, when we work this out, is going to be 1 over 1.18 squared, which is equal to 1 over 1.392. Remember, you got to square that. And then that's going to lead us to a yield of 71 percent and that's just using this formula and that's really the only one that you need to remember or that's the only one that you need to write down in your note sheet or the only one that you'd ever need to look up all these other ones the formulas in the book are really common sense uh, when we're talking about ingots slicing them into wafers we're talking about how many dies fit on a chip and so we'll move on and the question is how many dies fit on a wafer well, first we need to do the area of the wafer. Now the area for a circle, because the wafers are circular, is pi r squared. Now in the problem, we're told that they are 30 centimeter diameter. Take note of that too. Most of the time you'll be given the wafer in diameter, so that means it has a 15 centimeter radius. So with that, we're going to take pi times 15 centimeters, uh, 15 centimeters quantity squared, so that we'll get centimeters squared. 
That results then in 706.5 centimeters squared. That's the area of the wafer. So again, you think about, okay, it's about 15 centimeters. That's about, I can't even get it, about here. Okay, yeah, 706 uh, centimeters squared. Yeah, that seems about right. So the number of dies then is going to be the area of the wafer divided by the area of the die. Again, this isn't perfect. We've got rectangular dies fitting on a circular wafer, but we're going to ignore the edge effects and assume that we uh, use this approximation here. With that then, we have 706.5 centimeters squared divided by three centimeters squared. So every die is three centimeters squared, and we've got a total area of 706. So we divide that out and we see that fitting on a wafer, trying to be fabricated, are 235.5 dies. So 235 dies fit on a wafer. But remember, those aren't all going to be good. We only get 71.8% of those um, that actually work once we fabricate. So we ask, how many good dies do we get per wafer? Well, we tried to make 235.5 dies, uh, and yes, I understand you can't make half of a die, but I'm carrying through the significant figures here. We don't need to round off because we're using an approximation to begin with. So how many good dies do we get? Well, then this is just going to be the yield times the dies per wafer. Yield times the dies per wafer. And this brings up an important point. This is how many we tried to make, but we only get about 70% of them. So how many good dies do we get? Well, we get 70% of the ones that we try to make. So how many good ones do we get out? We get 169.1 good dies. At this point, though, it's important, even though um, dies come in uh, whole numbers. When we talk about the yield, that's an average yield. So if we're making a thousand different wafers, the yield is just going to be on average. So it does make sense to we say on average we have 169.1 good dies uh, because this is an average or an expectation value of what we'd get. Finally, we've got what is the cost per good die? Well, in here, we need to know how much the wafer costs first, because if we know how much the wafer costs and we know how many dies we get, we can divide. But we haven't yet calculated what the cost per a wafer is. So remember that the cost of the wafer is going to be the cost of the ingot. divided by the number, and I'm going to call this the number of slices. Because remember, it's a big old tube, and we slice it into wafers. Well, in this case, we, in the original given part of the problem, we saw that there was a hundred of them. And how much did the ingot cost? Well, it cost $20,000. And then how many do we get? We get 100 wafers. So that's going to be $200 per wafer. And again, these equations are all in the book, but if you think about it, I uh, sell you an ingot for $20,000 and you can get 100 slices of wafers out of it. Well, then that's gonna be $200 per wafer. Now in that $200, we got 169 good dies out of it. So what do those dies cost? Well, it's going to be about a dollar a piece because we paid $200. We got almost 200 dies. All we need to do is divide. So the cost per good die is just going to be the cost of the wafer divided by the number of good dies. 
And then we do that, we see that we paid $200 for the wafer. We got 169.1 good dyes out of it. And that means that the average cost is going to be a buck 18. And that's our final answer. Oops, came. <laughs> I didn't realize it went out of, uh, out of view. So $200 divided by 169, we get a buck 18. And that is the first problem. Uh, we'll see more in-class exercises when we get to lecture on Wednesday.